Welcome to Mojo Talks. I'm Eric, and as you may know, we have a series where we tell you what you should binge over the weekend, and we come back and talk about it. And speaking of which, if you like these kind of conversations, make sure to subscribe to Mojo Talks, ring that bell. Uh, and here we are, we've convened a panel to talk about the shows that you were supposed to binge over the weekend. We have Mike and Emily. How you guys doing? All right, how about you? Uh, oh, oh, oh. Okay. Not fine. <laughs> uh, interesting. Well, before we get to that, we should actually list uh, the five items that we told you uh, were binge worthy over the weekend. And then we can come back and get Mike's impression because I, I have a feeling there's some hot takes here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we mentioned Reboot the Guardian Code. That's the one, right? All right, we'll get to that. Uh, Trailer Park <laughs> Boys Season 12, A Series of Unfortunate Events Season 2. That's what we are going to be talking about. Oh, yeah. Uh, Wild Wild Country and Rapture. Now, I had a chance to watch Wild Wild Country, uh, or at least a little bit of it, and it's a really interesting documentary on Netflix about... Uh, well, it's basically about the uprising of the uh, Rajneesh movement, which was pretty much a cult back in the 80s, um, and they... Uh, moved to a small town in Antelope, Oregon. And the, it was a town of uh, maybe 40 people. And all of a sudden, they bought hectares, thousands of hectares of land, and just kind of built themselves a community that was meant to be for 10,000 people or eventually 500,000 people. And it's this series that basically shows, you know, it's one of these uh, charismatic leaders, this guy uh, basically known either as Osho or Bagwan or simply uh, Rajneesh. And it's six parts, so it really takes its time to kind of explain how uh, this town was disrupted by these people and, and you know, that uh, people thought that they were having wild sex parties and strange Boy. meditation <laughs> techniques. And, and, you know, imagine a town of 40 uh, very conservative people living mm-hmm. in Oregon, you know, they're ranchers, and all of a sudden these uh, uh, people clad all in red come in and have their sex parties, and they're led by a... Uh, you know, uh, a pretty much, uh, you know, a cult leader type that guy. sounds a lot better than what I did. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's, 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 well, I'm done. <laughs> it's quite fascinating. If you have a chance and you're interested in this kind of stuff, um, you know, it, uh, it, it tells a very fascinating story that I didn't know very much about. Uh, mm-hmm. Moving right along, a couple of other things. As I mentioned, there's Rapture. Uh, or uh, Yeah, Ra- Rapture, which is a Netflix documentary series as well about the lives of nine different hip-hop artists, uh, some really cool guys, uh, T.I., 2 Chains. Nas, Dave East, uh, G Logic, um, uh, sorry, G Easy and Logic, just Blaze. I love A Boogie with the Hoodie and Rhapsody. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, some interesting lives uh, to be chronicled. Uh, maybe different people from uh, Rajneesh. Uh, <laughs> and now let's get to what you guys saw. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on Reboot. Yeah, uh, he's, he's fit to he's be tied. Stinging. He's, he's gonna, mad. Gonna, <laughs> yes, he is. But turn into a rant. But but let's let's save and, and let's yeah. package that anger up. Tell me about a series of unfortunate events, season two. Well, uh, it really does pick up exactly where season one left off, and for better or for worse, is a lot of the same. Mm-hmm. It's it's consistent. I will give it that. But the format of the Baudelaire orphans, who are the main characters, kind of being in a new locale, then interacting with or being found by Count Olaf the villain and then no one believing that Count Olaf is there while he's in disguise. It does get kind of monotonous in the binging format. Like if you're just watching over and over again, it kind of like, you feel like you've seen this before. Right, it's, it, I guess it, there's a bit of a monotony. Yeah. yeah, but that is kind of the charm of the show too is that you feel the futility that the Baudelaire's feel. You're just like, oh, this is going to happen all over again. And, and the show itself, yeah. or the series itself, is very meta, right? So they, yeah. they kind of play on the fact that sure. you know what you're going to get. Yeah, like for instance, they start off sitting on the same bench that they left with and they're like, it feels like it's been such a long time that Sunny, the baby, looks more like a toddler now. And she does, like she's aged since the show ended. So it's fun that they kind of poke fun at that, but at the same time, it does feel like it's getting a little bit same deal, Mm -hmm. which is why I was really happy with like new characters being brought in. Right, the casting is... is, So uh, Neil Patrick Harris is back uh, playing... Even darker than before. He's as Count Olaf. He's doing a great job, and less so reminding me of Jim Carrey than the first season, which I found that maybe he was guilty of, even though... He did a really good job. Um, but then there's new players like Nathan Fillion, uh, who plays Jacques Snicket. Um, and he has already uh, uh, co-starred with Nathan Yes, in Cass. Dr. Horrible Sing-Along blog, which is a really fun I, I love that. That's the best thing yeah, ever. Yeah, it was a really fun 
uh, interaction, honestly, every time they were on screen together. The hammer is my penis. <laughs> Didn't you say they used to play that when you were a substitute yeah, teacher? Yeah, I was a substitute teacher in high school, and uh, I used to put that on because it's, it's about 50 minutes. Yeah. So it's exactly a period. So <laughs> it was perfect. You must have been their favorite sub. <laughs> oh, it was perfect. No, but the kids were like, what is this? This is awesome. <laughs> you know, they had no idea. But. Yeah. Now, you were also talking about the production value, that, that really yeah. that's one of the, the major pluses here. Absolutely. I mean, they, I think, upped the ante a bit this, this season, but it still feels just like a cross between Wes Anderson and Tim Burton. Mm -hmm. It's like the exact like, happy medium that I wanted for this show. Like, it is the perfect adaptation in terms of tone, I find. So the director the is Barry Sonnenfeld, yeah. who did, uh, amongst others, the Men in Black series. So you yeah. kind of know that you're going to get that, mm -hmm. that, that feeling. Yeah, from. it's definitely really, really fun, very dark at times, but also is strangely hopeful. Right, because yeah. that, that's the thing, is that it, mm -hmm. it is, it's very of the times, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a secret organization, this is not so much a spoiler, I promise, uh, <laughs> uh, that kind of wants people to rise up and take the mantle of being um, curious and persistent in their dreams and goals and being good people and putting out literal and metaphorical fires. And that's a very, it just seems like a very nice message. And like calling kids specifically to take the mantle of being the good. Right, which again, again is very much the zeitgeist of what's exactly. going on right now. But exactly. the, I think this was all written pre-Trump oh, yeah. and pre, you yeah. know, this was written during the <laughs> Clinton administration, yeah, if I'm I not mean, mistaken, or, or it, a, a yeah. while back. Yeah, I mean, um, the author, Daniel Handler, who is Lemony Snicket, um, does have a hand in the current production, mm -hmm. but still, like, it's not so different from the original material that I feel like they've specifically tailored it to now, which is weird. It's weird to think that it seems so present. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, speaking of unfortunate events, Ooh. you, my friend, you spent... Yeah. yeah, your show is, like, inconvenient things. My mm -hmm. show is... A total train wreck. It's a total train wreck. I've been waiting We're for... We're talking about Reboot. Yeah, yes. Reboot, The Guardian Code. Right. I've been waiting. I, I loved it growing up. 1994 to 2001 was the original run. It's a Canadian computer animated show. A mm -hmm. pioneer. It came out a year before Toy Story. Yep. Right? They were rocking it before Toy Story. 1994. Yep. Right. So I've been waiting since 2001. It ended on a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. Okay? So is that going to get resolved? There's been for years and years on and off announcements, pseudo announcements. They're supposed to make three movies a different show that was not going to suck, a comic that was supposed to get adapted. Anyway, it's finally here. This show was announced like in 2014, uh -huh. right? So, it, And it's a live action reboot oh of God. an animated it's, series. It's That's like, I don't know where to start. Half the charm is the not it's, being live action. It's not even like half. It's like uh, of 23 minutes, uh, I'd say like 10 minutes they're in, they're in the internet cyberspace. So, so really, it got released on Netflix at 10 episodes one shot. Mm -hmm. They've apparently produced 20, so I guess they're waiting to release the other 10. Do you think they will? I guess I mean, they've put all of that money yeah. and they'll, resource into it, right? I guess right? they'll but just release it. Would they just like completely redo them? Yeah. The next 10? I, like, I don't know. But what's so bad about it? Okay. Is it so, so bad it's good, so when the trailer, or is it just bad? When the trailer it's released, it's a high school, four kids have been playing this online reboot game. It, it guides them, here's your class, go to classroom zero. They go under, there's a fake wall that's a hologram. So right away we're in like beyond sci-fi territory. The original okay. show took place in a computer. So everything that happened was, mm -hmm. you know, not that you have to, it's a kid show, but you could like, okay, it, it's happening. This one, they go through the wall, they go in, there's like a Stargate-y type transporter Star Trek thing. You step on it, boom, you're gone. You're not like VR headsets, you're in cyberspace. And then you're wearing like Halo type suits where we don't see your face. Right, and then right away, this AI is like, "You got to go on a mission and save like this thing." Hmm. Right, it's being attacked by a hacker. It's like, okay, so I guess we'll do it. Sure. You don't see their face. This is the biggest sin is that it's so poorly animated, and it's coming from mainframe oh. entertainment, which is like the pioneer. They were incredible. It looks worse than something they did back in '94, which doesn't make sense. 2018. How does it look worse? Is, was that an aesthetic choice? It's a stupid choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, everything screams cheap. Everything. Everything right. in that show. So you don't see their faces. There's, a, there's four of them. And every time someone talks, it cuts to live action, which doesn't make sense. It's in cyberspace. Live action. Like if I went like this, live action with a heads-up display like Iron Man, and I'm like, oh, guys, whoa. Whoa, did you see that explosion? That was awesome. Oh, I'm awesome. I could do this. It's like that's out of 23 minutes. <laughs> I feel like crying. It's so bad. And then there's this, uh, oh my god, I don't know where to start with the show. I'll just go through the, the main sins. 
Okay. Everyone's completely a stereotype. This is my house now. They show a lot of basketball. They don't show any games, they show basketball. Uh, they, there's the jock, the nerd, the... It, this sounds awful. It's awful. Yeah. I could go on for hours. I don't want to dwell on that. I'm so, so... upset. I liked the original. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there was a, you know, people, there, there was a... Um, there was a certain quality to it, like an almost naive quality to the original, mm -hmm. right? That okay, was... so so that brings me down to like what really fundamentally just makes me pissed. Okay. Okay, so Reboot is all about pop culture. They go into the games, it references Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Star Trek, it references everything. Even when they're not in games, they make these, these references. It's very pop relevant. They had mm -hmm. Austin Powers in there, right? Everything. Yeah. This has no references what's, I didn't see one reference to anything outside that's pop culture. -y. Then they somehow think they're appealing to the old fans like me by having the old characters. So they have Megabyte as one of the villains who was the virus. But Tony J's yeah. dead, so. Tony J's dead. They got a guy to impersonate him, and he does, he does an okay job. Like, I'm like, that of all the sins this has, that's like the one saving grace was this guy, props, he did a good job until he raises cool. his voice. Uh, Once he raises his voice, he, he loses like the British accent and he becomes like super, it doesn't make sense. Like, when he's, he's like, you will never, you know, and then it's like, hey, guy, you know, like, it doesn't make sense. So th they show you mainframe, it, they show you Megabyte, he gets pulled into this new world, which sucks, and then the, the question you would probably have is, well, why are you binging this? Why are you doing this to yourself? Well, we even got comments, and uh, we're, we're running out of time, but I just want to mention that we did get some comments in the original video saying, well, if these are things to binge, why are you putting something that you don't think is binge-worthy? Okay, because every reboot fan has to see this through. Is it going to mm. get better? Are they going to pay tribute to the fans? And then the biggest thing, the last thing i got to talk about is they bring in a, uh, uh, they break the fourth wall by having a fan. So when they reactivate mainframe, the computer, mm -hmm. it goes online. This old, like, bearded loser is in his parents' basement, because he tells us he's in his parents' basement. He goes, wow, he goes to his computer, wow, it's back online, I've been waiting 20 years for this, right? So he's supposed to be me. I've been waiting 20 years for this. All around his room, there's posters of the actual characters, and like, uh, they had a DVD movie, uh, Demon Rising, they have the poster, they have the toys, they have a statue of Mike the TV, one of the, mm -hmm. like, the characters. Oh my god, I'm in so much pain. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's like, oh, I've been waiting to play, because in the show, every week they play a game, right? And if they don't beat the game, they die. So he takes out a case and on a pillow, he has like an Xbox box, but they, you could tell they repurposed it to be the, the game Starship Alcatraz, which was one of the coolest games from like episode five. So that's how far they got, fifth mm -hmm. episode, before they stopped watching and made a new show. He goes, oh, I gotta, I gotta beat this. And he's like, while he's playing, he's standing up. He's like, mom said I wasted my life, uh, wasted my life. But look oh who's, who goes, look who's wrong, mom. I'm gonna beat this game. And I'm like, this show, I don't, I don't swear often, but this show is a giant <laughs> to all the fans. Whoa! <laughs> you could beep it. I'm sure you beeped it. Mend and defend. I didn't do either. Right. Well, okay. Well, let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks Mike, for having us. I hope you feel better. Um, <laughs> I binged this. It was like four hours of my life. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>